I think number one, more than at any time since the election of Franklin Roosevelt in his first term, there's a lot of stuff here on Earth that needs to be handled. At the same time, yes, of course, we all like to see disclosure. But I'm one of those people who in the 30 odd years that I've been in this field, and I got in in an extremely dramatic way, basically with the memory of something that had happened to me in childhood, uh, a overwhelming daylight sighting with one of my sisters. Uh, I was 14 and she was 12. And it so upset me, being a fairly straight little kid, and my basic stuff at that time was I was 14, I was still in the Boy Scouts. I was collecting bugs and stamps and rocks and painting and cooking and wasn't into sports. I was sort of, you know, just a goofy little leave it to beaver type. And of course I saw, you know, some of those cool, wonderful, idiotic B films of, uh, you know, flying saucers and aliens. But I don't know, it was just implicit to me that what the adult world had put out there, that of course this is but it's the movies, this is science fiction. I guess it never really occurred to me that it wasn't science fiction. And on a particular late morning, um, in a very pretty little village, a bedroom community uh, um, of Manhattan, um, in Nassau County, I was playing on the front lawn with my sister and caught something in my peripheral vision and looked up to see on a clear blue sky, not a cloud in it, five silvery white disc-shaped objects in a very precise V-type formation, coming in at a high rate of speed and then just stopping over the neighbor's house. Well, in the years intervening, and there were 14 or 15 years where this was just something I didn't think about, I put it out of my mind. But at 29 or 30, the memory came up uh, with a vengeance. People say, well, why do you think it came up when it came up? Well, I'll tell you. I think number one and most important, the mind is just phenomenally intricate and complex beyond even the knowledge of scholars and specialists. I think it was just something I could then handle. And I was allowed to do just that. Number two. Um, at the time, I, this would have been 76 or so, 76, I had taken a human potential workshop. I, within a year or two, I went into therapy and I got a great deal of value out of it, but I'd never done anything like this. And it was like four very, very long days and just a few hours sleep a night, so I was kind of sleep deprived. And I lived in Chinatown. I uh, had a loft in Chinatown, and it was within two or three days after the Chinese New Year. Now, to digress for 20 seconds, uh, Mayor Giuliani decided that uh, this 6,000-year-old tradition had to be stopped because who knows, somebody could hurt themselves. Yes, they're illegal, but everyone else always turned their back, and I think it's kind of sad. Anyway, in the old days, it was like living in the DMZ. It was just the smell of cordite and gunpowder, and they were going off 24 hours a day. They'd throw mats over these street lights, light them, and they'd go for 40 minutes. I think my cat had a nervous breakdown. Um, but I was open to something, and this memory came crashing through. And I called my sister, and I think this is important to spend some time on, because certainly some of you are here for some reason beyond intellectual curiosity.